Hello everyone, this is Shankar. Uh, let us study some physics. Okay, so this video is a problem solving video. Okay, on the chapter scalars and vectors. Okay, uh, how to use this video uh, is very, very simple. Uh, what you have to do is I'll do some questions with, with you, along with you. But first, what you can do is you can pause the video as soon as you see the question and you can start attempting the question. And if you don't know the answer to it, uh, you can do it with me uh, along with the video. Okay, so this is uh, this is also can be used like an assignment uh, sort of thing where you can just, uh, you know, uh, watch the questions, try it on your own. In case you are not able to do, that is when you look, okay, look, uh, look through the solutions that I am describing. The next thing is uh, who, who are, you know, the people that I made this video for, okay, uh, who are the people who, who, are, who I made this video for are those people who understand the theory in class, but for some reason are not able to approach the question. So there are a lot of people like that who are able to understand everything in class, but when, I, when they go home and try some questions, they are unable to approach the question. So this is aimed at those kids. Plus also uh, this video is not gonna be, uh, you know, directly high level question solving. Just like my teaching, I'll always start at zero level. That means I'm gonna start with NCRT level questions. Then I go to J mains level question. Then I go to the advanced level question and then uh, beyond that, okay? So that is the order that I'm going to follow. So the first five, six questions are going to be NCRT level. Then the next 10 questions will be J mains level and the next 10 questions will be J advanced level. Okay, so if, if, if you don't have an idea of how to approach question, this video is going to immensely help you. Also, it is for those people, uh, this NCRT section is especially, especially for those people who are preparing for competitive coaching. Okay, so competitive coach in, 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 in this competitive coaching, what exactly happens is uh, we are so in focus uh, with the competitive side of things that we forget how to write the answers and that creates a problem for us in UTs and other things okay so if you want to excel in school exams as well so the first question five questions that I'm solving for NCRT I'm going to solve it in in, in, in the board manner okay so I also have experience teaching uh, board kids so I know exactly how to prepare for boards as well okay so and you cannot give up on boards as well because now suddenly if you start having uh, you know if you want to go to a uh, university outside or if you want to you know just get some good marks in boards this method of writing answers is also going to help you okay so in ncrt there is a there is an art to writing answers and in UTs, what happened you start arguing with your school teacher so if the answer is correct why didn't i get marks okay but uh, i'll show you why you're not getting marks because there is a pattern of writing answers okay in in, in cbsc and we are going to follow that whenever we are doing the ncrt question for the five first five question i'm going to do it in uh, how I would personally do in a boards exam. Okay, so please pay attention, uh, have fun. Okay, and it's not necessary that you have to complete the video in one go. So I'll I'll do probably 20, 30 questions. Uh, you should also do it over over a period of time. Like let's say let's one or two days. You just do five, six, uh, any number of questions you, that you are comfortable with. Okay, so let us start our discussion. This is the first question from NCRT. Very easy question. Find out the magnitude and direction of resultant of two vectors, A vector and B vector in terms of their magnitudes and the angle between them. Okay, so this essentially they're asking us to derive the parallelogram law of addition. Okay, parallelogram law of addition, which we have already derived in class. Okay, so let me show you how to how to write the answer if this if this question is asked in board or in UTs or whatever school exams you have. Okay, so let me show you how it is done. So the question gives us three data here: a vector, b vector, and theta vector, theta angle between them. Okay, so let me draw them. Let me draw them. This is the b vector. Okay, this is the a vector. This is the a vector. Okay, this is the a vector. And the angle between them is theta. Okay, so I'm going to name this uh, because this is a parallelogram. I'm going to name this. Let's call this O. Let's call this P. Let's call this Q. And you know what is the next step, right? We parallelly transpose A to the top like this. Okay, let's call this A vector. Okay, and we parallel transpose B to the right side, making completing what we call a parallelogram. Okay, so this parallelogram is completed when I uh, when I transpose A to top and B to the right side. Uh, and then what we have to do is we have to extend A vector to this side and we have to drop a perpendicular. Okay, we also have to name this, let's call this S. Okay, and uh, P, Q, R, S, T, let's call this point T. 
okay and parallelogram law states that whatever the length of this this diagonal this diagonal the length of this diagonal is going to be the resultant we are looking for okay so parallelogram law states that this value of this r is going to be the addition of a vector plus b vector so a vector plus b vector is essentially r vector but finding out the length of r vector is your job okay so let me show you how to write this the first thing you will write here is this let oq and let oq be a b vector and let uh, op be a vector okay and let theta be the angle between them so the first statement that you write in any board's exam is you have to define the variables that you took okay so most of the people miss this but you you should not okay if you want to score 100 percent if you if you if you want to be sure that you're doing really good in boards exams or in school exams this is what you have to start with whatever variables you took in the question you mentioned them in the beginning okay let this is this let this is this let this is this okay this is how you write next thing you'll write is that Parallelogram law states that parallelogram law states that states that uh, r vector is equal to a vector plus b vector. Okay, so then you write then you write in triangle SPT. Okay, so this is a triangle SPT. This is a ninety degree triangle. ST is going this length ST will be equal to how much? I have derived this in class. This angle is going to be theta. Why? Because corresponding angles and this length is B. This, this B, B vector is B. So this is perpendicular in this triangles. This perpendicular is going to be equal to B sine theta. I have derived this in class. Okay, I have derived this in class. The value of PT would be again from trigonometry. This is this is the adjacent side, the hypotenuse we know. So PT upon B is how much? This is actually adjacent side upon uh, hypotenuse is cos theta. So from here you can get PT is equal to B cos theta. I'm going to write this here. Okay, PT is equal to cos theta. So notice how I'm writing this. In triangle SPT, ST is equal to B sine theta, PT is equal to B cos theta. You can also add this from trigonometry. Okay, from trigonometry. I, I got this from analyzing this triangle SPT trigonometrically. Okay, now in the next step is in triangle OST, this big triangle OST, R is the one that we are looking for. OS, OS, this length OS is what we are looking for. OS square is actually equal to ST square plus OT square. This is what, this is what Pythagoras theorem. Okay, you can write this here. This is Pythagoras. Go, yes, I don't know if that is correct. Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I don't know if Pythagoras, I think this is more correct. Pythagoras theorem. Okay, Pythagoras theorem. I don't know if the spelling is correct. You have to check that. Okay, please check that for me and let me know in the comments if I wrote that correctly. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem, uh, you can just mention here, this is what I got from Pythagoras theorem and then just plug in the values. What is OS? OS is what we have to find. The value of ST is what? ST is B sine theta, B sine theta square. Okay, and OT square is what? OT is a combination of OP and PT. OP is what? A and PT is what? B cos theta. Okay. This is what I have to square. Now, when, when I square these two terms, when I square these two terms, this will become B square sine square theta. And this one will become, I'm opening this using A square plus B square plus twice AB. Okay, so this will become A square plus B square cos square theta plus twice of AB cos theta. Twice of AB cos theta. Now, B square sine square theta plus B square cos square theta, when you add them together, this will become B square. And this will become a square plus twice a b cos theta okay so from here this os os or r square will be equal to b square so this resultant is how much under root of a square plus b square plus twice a b cos theta okay but that gives us only the magnitude okay but i told you the vector is made up of both magnitude as well as direction so for the direction part i told you what you can do is find out this angle the angle between r vector and you know a a vector we call this phi this angle is phi so in this triangle o o s t again in this triangle o s t so again you will write like this 
in triangle OST, tan phi is going to be equal to perpendicular upon base. Okay, so perpendicular, perpendicular upon base. Okay, so what is the perpendicular here? Perpendicular is ST and the base is OT. So ST by OT, okay, ST by OT. Again, I plug in the values of ST and OT. ST is B sine theta and OT is A plus B cos theta, okay. So from here, this, this whatever this fancy uh, angle phi we took, that is equal to tan inverse B sine theta upon a plus B cos theta. So if you write like this, I'm sh pretty sure your school teacher will have no way of cutting your marks and you'll get full marks, okay? But again, people who are from competitive coaching, they will underestimate. There's a tendency for them to underestimate this and be like, oh, what is this sorcery? So I don't understand why I have to write this. I perfectly understand that statement, okay? There is actually no need to, if you understand this, what is the point of writing all this? The answer is there is a set pattern to writing things in CBC. If you want to perform good in UTs, this is the way you have to write so that no marks of yours is cut by your school teacher. Okay. And again, if you are only focused on advanced coaching, okay, that uh, and you don't care about your board marks at, at all, then you can pretty much uh, just skip this and just, I don't know. But one thing you have to understand if you just write this formula, okay this is the formula just take it okay just take it madam this madam is not gonna give you marks for this okay if you just write the formula for this okay you have to do some sort uh, sort of derivation uh, which includes uh, steps like these okay so this is it okay and let's move on to the next question okay so this is the next question that we are going to do Okay, rain is falling vertically with the speed of 35 meter per second. Wind starts blowing after some time with a speed of 12 meter per second in east to west direction. In which direction should the boy waiting at a bus stop should hold his umbrella? So this is again a vector question. It's a little bit of application. So whatever vector addition we have studied, we have to apply this. So pause the video and try this question and let uh, and then you can uh, try it with me. Okay, uh, if you are unable to do it. So try it yourself first. Pause the video right here and then try it. Okay, so let me start solving. So if I make a diagram for this, remember as physics students, you are expected to make good diagrams. Okay, you should be able to make good diagrams. Okay, so the rain is falling vertically with a speed of 35 meter per second. Okay, so I'm going to make a vector like this that shows the rain. So this is a vector that is representing the rain. The magnitude of this is 35 meter per second. Okay, this is, this is the rain. This is the rain vector, okay? Then if I consider, usually we consider east on the right-hand side, west on the left-hand side. So wind starts uh, to flow in the, from, from east to west. So that means this vector is going like this from, let's consider this as east, this as west. So this wind, wind here is actually flowing from east to west direction with what velocity? 12 meter. Per second 12 meter per second wind okay if i want to find out the resultant if i want to find out the resultant i have to find out this resultant you what is the resultant between 12 meter per second and 35 meter per second the angle between them is 90 degrees okay obviously if something is falling down and something is going horizontally that means the angle between them is what it's 90 degree okay so what you can do is use parallelogram law here okay Actually, they are just 90 degrees, so you can simply use Pythagoras theorem also. But if you are confused, sir, so the best way, whenever you have two vectors, the easiest way to do is uh, do this is with parallelogram theorem, okay? Parallelogram law of addition, because in that you don't have to think too much. You have a formula, set formula to finding out the magnitude and the direction, okay? So let's 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 do this. Let's uh, say ki R is equal to under root a square plus b square plus twice a b cos of 90 degree now as soon as you put 90 degree uh, this whole term will become zero 
okay this whole term will become zero so that means the uh, the resultant is just under root a square plus b square and this is something that you are familiar with if two vectors are perpendicular to each other the resultant will be under root a square plus b square okay this is something that you can remember or you can also use the cosine law or or, or this parallelogram law of addition to do it okay and once you put cos 90 cos 90 becomes zero it will automatically come out okay so here all you have to do is under root of 35 square plus 12 square okay and uh, let me do 35 square i don't know how much 35 square is so 5 5 is 25 2 comes out 15 plus 15 is 32 so 3 comes out 3 is a 9 9 plus 3 is 12 okay so this is 1225 plus 12 square is 144 okay so if i take an under root here uh this will be under root 9 this is going to be 6, this is going to be, so 13, 69. This, I think, is the square for uh, 37. Okay, let's check. Let's check. 7, 7, 49, 4 comes out, 21, 42 plus 4 is 46. 4 comes out, 3, 3 is a 9 plus 4 is 13. Yes, 13, 69. So this is the square root of 37. So the resultant is going to be 37 meter per second. Okay, it is going to be. 37 meter per second so the resultant of 35 meter per second and 12 meter per second is going to be 37 meter per second okay now i need to find out what is this direction okay uh, at what angle from the vertical or the horizontal whichever one you are comfortable with, with what angle is 37 meter per second uh flowing at we have to give a direction also right we cannot just give the magnitude and be over with it so to find out this angle so what i can do is if i want to find out from the vertical let's call this angle alpha cos alpha would be what cos alpha would be base upon hypotenuse 37 being the hypotenuse if you imagine a right triangle like this if you imagine a right triangle like this because you know all these vectors are from trigonometry only so in any time you are confused just make a right triangle and figure out what you are trying to find okay so cos alpha would be equal to how much cos alpha would be 35 by 37 base upon hypotenuse okay so from here alpha can come out to be cos inverse of 35 by 37 this answer is absolutely correct okay you can also uh, you know do it in terms of sine also sine if you want to use tan you can also do tan also but if you if you just define this right angle right angle triangle after that you can use any trigonometry formula to find out the angle between uh, this 37 meter per second and the vertical or the horizontal okay all you have to do is just define the triangle you can use any trigonometric uh, uh, you know ratio that you're comfortable with and that is how you do so the final answer uh, for this particular question is uh, there is uh, the the you know the rain is actually falling at 37 meter per second um, at, at at an angle which is equal to this this i can actually put it in the calculator and, and find out but no need no need okay uh, cbc is not expecting you to know the value of cos inverse 35 by 37 okay if you write it like this you'll get the full marks okay so remember to just underline your answers before you exit the question okay so let's go to the next question then pretty easy stuff okay let's do this one okay a motor boat is racing towards north at 25 kilometers per hour and the water in the current the water current in that region is 10 kilometers per hour in the direction of 60 degree east of south okay so let us understand this let us make a diagram so north i will usually point upwards okay so for me generally this is the convention i use north upwards east west and this is south this is what i usually follow okay so based on this the motor boat was going from uh, going towards north with 25 kilometers per hour so i have 25 kilometers per hour pointing upwards okay and then this uh this this water current is actually going in 60 degree east of west east of south so that means so here actually i'll teach you how to understand this okay east of south means you will start at south i'll start at south from south i will go 60 degree east okay so whenever you get a convention like this always look for the last last word south okay east of south means i start at south from south i go 60 degree towards east 
okay so that means uh the vector the vector of this water is actually going to if i extend this like a per, uh, perpendicular so this is the vertical this is the south direction from this i have to make this at 60 degrees okay so this is like 60 degrees okay and uh, this magnitude of this is going to be 10 kilometer per hour okay so find out the resultant velocity find out the resultant velocity so again this can be done by two ways okay it can be done uh, since we don't have anything the question doesn't say you have to do it graphically or component wise so i always prefer to do it in component wise so i'll do it in component wise but you can also do it using graphical method okay all you have to do is find out uh, a square plus b square plus twice ab cos of theta where theta is the angle between 10 kilometer per hour and 25 kilometer per hour which in this case is going to be 120 degree i taught this in class okay it's not 60 degree the angle between 25 kilometer per hour vector and 10 kilometer per hour vector is 120 degree so you'll have to find out cos 120 degree okay and cos of 120 degree uh, it's actually equal to uh, minus half cos 120 degree is equal to minus half okay so you can try using that process also but i'm going to take components because com in component method you will never have any mistakes okay so if i want to take components of this orange vector i told you that towards the theta is cos theta okay so this 10 kilometer can be broken down into two vectors one vector pointing downwards which would be 10 cos 60 uh, so that means 5 kilometer per hour downwards okay and one in this direction okay one component in the right hand side and this would be 10 sine 60 okay 10 sine 60 would essentially mean uh 5 root 3 5 root 3 kilometer per hour okay so essentially you have three vectors now so i i got rid of this 10 kilometer per hour i broke it i broke it into two vectors one vector pointing right side one vector pointing downwards okay now what is the use of this what is the fun part is because 25 and now 5 kilometer per hour are exactly opposite to each other i can say the net resultant of these two vectors will be 20 kilometers in the upwards direction let me stay state put that statement one more time since 25 kilometers is up uh, upwards and 5 kilometer per hour is exactly downwards in the minus y and this is plus y okay uh, when they are just opposite of each other, I can simply subtract them. I can simply subtract them. If they're in the same direction, I can simply add them. If they're in opposite direction, I can simply subtract them. Okay, so 25 kilometer per hour minus 5 kilometer per hour. So that means the net upward will be 20 kilometer per hour. Okay, and then don't forget this 5 root 3 in this direction. So I have 5 root 3 in this direction. Okay, so if I want to find out the resultant from this, so this can be written how this can be written as 5 root 3 i cap plus 20 j cap okay this is in kilometer this is how i did component form if you remember okay this is how i broke things into components now they are asking what is this magnitude i already told you how to find out the magnitude from from the component form always just square okay 5 root 3 square plus 20 square and this will give you what under root of 5 square 25 into 3 this is 75 this is 400 okay so under root of 475 is the answer we are looking for okay this is the answer we are looking for so i think uh, 375 is not a perfect square is it 25 is uh, 625 yes it's not a perfect square okay so no need to worry you can keep the answer like this only no need to worry you'll get find the resultant velocity of the boat yes this is all you have to find out you don't even have to find out the direction okay so root 475 is the answer to this question okay <clears throat> okay so let us do this question uh, in this question it's saying that there are two forces each equal to p by 2 uh, that are acting at right angles okay and their effect may be neutralized by a third force acting along their bisector in the opposite direction with a magnitude of how much so if i try to make uh, the diagram for this then the diagram would look something like this so there are two forces p by 2 and p by 2 which are acting at 90 degrees okay these are acting at 90 degrees 
these are acting at 90 degrees this is what the first statement says okay then i have to find out a you know a force in this in this direction in this direction or or, or a vector in this direction uh, which will essentially just cancel out all of this all of this okay so uh, if i think about this let's let's call this 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 x vector let's call this a x vector okay so how will this how will i proceed uh, with this question the, the the answer is very simple so i first i have to find out what is the resultant of p by 2 and p by 2 okay so uh, first i have to do that and since they are in the perpendicular direction so if i want to find out the resultant i can use the parallelogram law but in the previous question you saw if it is in 90 degree i can simply find out the resultant by by just doing under root of p by 2 whole square plus p by 2 whole square okay so this will give me under root uh, p square by 4 plus p square by 4 so if you uh, oh sorry so this would mean okay, this answer is equal to under root of 2 p square by 4 under root so 2 and 2 will cancel so your final answer will be p by root 2 this is this is the addition of p by 2 and p by 2 that will be in this direction okay obviously i have to find out whether how much this angle is how much is this angle so for this finding out this angle you can either use one of the formulas that are that was given in the board cos inverse of you know base upon hypotenuse or you can make, complete this triangle if I complete this triangle, this will be P by 2, this will be P by 2, and this angle is how much? Let's call this angle alpha. Tan alpha is what? Perpendicular, which is opposite side, P by 2, divided by P by 2, which means 1. So this angle is nothing but 45 degree. If tan alpha is 1, then alpha is 45 degree. So that means this P by 2 and P by 2, they are given separately to us, but if I add them together, if I add them together, I'll get a vector whose magnitude is what p by root 2 which is pointing in the opposite direction at 45 degrees now they are asking me in the question they are asking me what should be the magnitude of this x vector what should be the magnitude of this x vector so that it cancels out this entire thing so that means the addition of p by 2 p by 2 and this x vector needs to be zero so in other words they are asking me what should be the value of this x vector so that if i add x vector to this p root 2 this will become zero the answer is the x vector should also be equal to p by root 2 when x is equal to p by root 2 and they are both in opposite direction they will just cancel out and make this this zero okay and then that is exactly what is asked in the question this word neutralize this fancy word neutralize just means the net the sum of all the vectors should be equal to zero okay so the answer how you find it the answer is equal to p by root 2 some people will be doubtful okay, sir why does the need to find out this why do I need to find out this 45 degree? Because if this angle, we do not know if this is not 45 degree, this is not exactly going through the middle, then these two will not be in the opposite direction. These are in opposite directions because this vector that we find out, found out P by root 2 is also in exactly in the middle. It's the bisector of this, uh, uh, of this 90 degree, like 45 degree and 45 degree is going exactly through the middle. And in the question, it is said that this x vector is going through the middle, the bisector. So that's why they are in the same direction. Otherwise, uh, I won't be sure key whether x vector and this p root p by root 2 vector, okay, it's not p root 2, okay, it's p by root 2. So this p by root 2 vector and this x, x vector will not be in the same direction if that angle is not equal to 45. So that warranted the need for me to find what is that value 45 degree, okay? So that is why I found out this, okay? So, okay, now let us do this next question uh, where, Okay, so let us do this next question. In this next question, they are saying that we have a the a vector is given to us i cap 2j cap minus 3 cap when a vector b is added to this a vector we get a unit vector along the x-axis 
This is very easy to understand. As soon as they say unit vector along the axis, I exactly know what this is. Okay, so what is a unit vector along the x axis? I cap. Okay, I cap is a unit vector. One I cap is the unit vector pointing towards the x axis. One J cap is the unit vector pointing towards the y axis. And one K cap is the unit vector pointing towards the z axis. Okay, so here we have, so they are saying key a vector plus b vector okay a vector plus b vector should be equal to one i cap okay so a vector is how much it is one uh, it's i cap plus two j cap minus three k cap so plus uh, plus b vector is going to be equal to one i cap so what i have to do is as rearrange the terms so b vector will be one i cap and one i cap will cancel if i take this this side so this will be minus two j cap plus three k cap so i think the the first option is the correct one okay let's move on to the next question okay another easy question right here okay uh, if the magnitude of if the magnitude of x and y components of a vector are 7 and 6 so from the first statement they are saying the a vector a vector has 7 and 6 as the x and y components so how will i write this a vector i will write as 7 i cap plus 6 j cap so from, from the first statement only i can get this also the magnitude of x and y components of a plus b so if you do a plus b vector your components would be how much it will be 11 i cap plus 9 j cap this is what is given in the second statement the magnitude of x and y components of a vector plus b vector is 11 and 9 respectively what is the magnitude of b so what do i need to do i just need to simply subtract uh, a vector from a plus b vector so if i do a plus b minus a so that means I'm just subtracting these two. So 11i minus 7i plus 6j, oh sorry, plus 9j minus 6j. So what did I do? I subtracted the i from the i, subtracted the j from the j. So from here, 11 minus 7 is 4i cap, 9 minus 3 is, 9 minus 6 is 3j cap. Okay, so this is what? This is the uh, b vector but they don't want the b vector the question is asking what is the magnitude of b so remember i told you how to find out the magnitude if you if you are given the component form all you have to do is square the components and take it under root so the magnitude of b vector will be nothing but under root of four square plus under root of three square making this under root of 25 which is five so for this option a is correct Okay, let's do some more questions. Again, let's uh, do this formula based question. The angle between Z axis and the vector is asked. Okay, so we have a vector A vector. Let's, let's call this A vector, which is I cap plus J cap plus root two K cap. If I want to find out the magnitude of this A vector, how do I find out? I don't already told you all I have to do is square. I have to square the components. So the first one is one square. The second one is one square. The next one is root two square. Okay. So that means we have what? Under root of one plus one plus two, which is under root of four. And the magnitude of A vector is two. The magnitude of A vector is two. Now, if you remember the formula, for if you want any angle, like angle with the x-axis, angle with the y-axis, or angle with the z-axis, all you have to do is find out the cos of that angle. So cos of gamma, where I'm assuming that gamma is the angle between this vector and the z-axis, all this is equal to is the z component divide, divided by the total. total uh, if, you, if you forgot the formula, you can always refer to the uh, uh, to the class notes okay this is also available on the slide if you want to find out what is the angle between the vector and the uh, z axis all you have to do is find out this ratio the z component z component so like a z divided by magnitude of a so in our case the z component is root 2 root 2 and divided by 2 so if you do this you will get 1 by root 2 as your answer so essentially we are looking for an angle so cos gamma is equal to 1 1 by root 2 so that means gamma is what degree 45 degree 
right? Because if you know, uh, if you remember the trigonometric ratios, cos 45 is equal to 1 by root 2. Okay, so we have solved this. So the angle between z axis and the vector is 45 degree. Okay, cool. Okay, so in this question, uh, the question is saying you we have a vector like this. We have some uh, b vector. Let's call this a vector. A vector we have as 0 0.5 i cap plus 0 0.8 j cap. And this z component we do not know. So they are saying it, this is equal to c times k cap. Okay. And they are finding, uh, they are asking us to find out what is this value of c. The only thing that is given is that this a vector is a unit vector. So what, what is the property of unit vector? Unit vector is defined as this. It is a vector whose magnitude is one, whose magnitude is one. So all I have to do is find out the magnitude and how do I find out the magnitude? Square all the components, add them and take a square root. So this is nothing but 0 0.5 square plus 0 0.8 square plus C square. And this will be equal to how much? This will be equal to one. So squaring both sides, you'll get 0 0.5 square plus 0 0.8 square plus C square is equal to one. Okay, if you square both sides, one square is also one. Okay, so this will be c square will be nothing but 1 minus 0 0.5 square minus 0 0.8 square. So I think 0 0.5 square is 0 0.25. Okay, 525 and there are, so and this is minus 0 0.64. Okay, so, hmm. so if I do this correctly, uh, I'll have 0 0.75 minus 0 0.64, which makes this. 0 0.11 okay so obviously this is equal to c square okay if the then the value of c would be under root 0 0.11 let's see if we have the data option yes we do so option number a is correct for this question okay so let's move on to the next question easy stuff this is easy stuff okay let us do the next question in this, they are saying key, there's A plus B equal to C. The magnitude of A is given, magnitude of B is given, and the value of C is also given. And we are asked the value of what is the angle between A and B. So we'll use the simple, uh, you know, uh, parallelogram law. R is under root uh, A square plus B square plus twice AB cos theta, okay? And in this, our resultant is the C one. So I'll plug in with all the values. C is going to be three. A square is going to be 3, B square is going to be 3, 2 times under root of 3 multiplied by under root of 3 and cos of theta, okay? So if you solve this equation, you are going to get the value of cos theta. So this will become 9. This is 6 plus uh, 2, 3 is 6 cos theta, okay? So I end up with this cos theta equal to half, okay? So for what angle is cos theta equal to half? Theta equals to 60 degrees. So the answer to this question is 60 degree. Let's go. Okay, let's do a question which is slightly more difficult. This is based on vector product. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> here there is a there are two vectors given to us: vector A and vector B, and they are asking which of the following statements are true. So we have to check whether it is perpendicular, parallel, or and also we have to give uh, we have to check their magnitudes because there are options that are talking about the magnitudes. Okay, so uh, we have studied both the dot product and the uh, uh, vector product, the scalar product and the vector product. So we know that the definition of dot product is what? Dot product is essentially uh, A dot B is defined as magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cos of theta. Okay, so although we studied this, uh, there's one thing that uh, we need to know about this, that we are dealing with cos theta. So any time, any time a vector is perpendicular to b vector, any time a vector is perpendicular to b vector, a dot b should come out to be zero. It should come out to be zero because we're dealing with uh, cos theta here. And I also told you in case of when we, do, when we do i dot j, those are perpendicular vectors, the all answer always comes out to be zero. So here, if they're asking if A is perpendicular to B, then all you have to do is find out A dot B, 
will have to find out a dot b if this is numerically equal to zero then option a would be correct okay so let's check it out so a vector is how much it is i cap minus j cap plus 2k cap okay and how what is the value of b b is 3i minus 3j plus 6k okay so if i multiply them together okay if i multiply them together the answer would be 3 ones are 3 plus 3 plus 12 okay so the answer is the answer is uh it's 18 okay it's not zero so i can say for sure ki a is not perpendicular to B. okay it's not perpendicular to b let's check whether they are parallel to b so how do you check the concept of parallel how do you check whether something is parallel okay so if you have two vectors like this okay i have i cap plus j cap plus k cap and i multiply this thing by two so for example 2i plus 2j plus 2k okay these two these two vectors would be parallel so what i'm trying to say is if the two vectors are such that if you divide one vector by a particular scalar number then you'll get the same uh, vector uh, as in if i what, say, if i try to say it simply this would be something like this the components the individual components are a direct multiple of the other vector so here you can see ki i got this vector by multiplying this with two okay so if i multiply this with minus one this would become minus i minus j minus k okay so this is again other another parallel vector parallel vector but in the opposite direction okay so this is how we check the parallel uh thing okay so in this if you see this a vector and b vector if i multiply a vector by three if i multiply a vector by the number three i'll get the b vector yes or no uh, uh do it do it check it yourself like if i multiply a vector with three this would become uh let, let me take a different pen here if I multiply a vector with three, this will become three i cap minus three j cap and three to just six k cap. If you check this, this is exactly matches with b. So that means these two vectors are parallel. So how do you check the parallel nature? You just divide the components. Okay, you divide the components. If you're getting the same number, that means they are parallel. So uh, what do you do? Uh, for example, x component of b is three. So three divided by one is equal to minus three divided by minus one and this is equal to six divided by two so all you have to do is check this ratio bx by ax by by ay and bz by az if the ratios are all of these ratios are equal then the lines will be parallel okay if the ratios are negative that means they are anti-parallel they are parallel but in the opposite direction okay so here option b is correct we can also check the uh, magnitudes here uh, the magnitude of A would be what? The magnitude of A would be under root 1 square plus minus 1 square plus 2 square, which would mean this is equal to under root of 4, 5, 6. Okay, so under root of 6. Magnitude of B, on the other hand, is under root 3 square plus minus 3 square plus 6 square. Okay, so that would mean under root of 9 plus 9, that is 18 plus 36. Uh, that makes it uh, uh, how much 54 okay so uh, they're asking us the ratio so if I do b vector divided by a vector then I'd get root 54 by 6 so that is 9 uh, so that would mean under root of 9 is 3 okay so I can say ki a vector is it has like a one third the magnitude of uh, the b vector or b vector a uh, b vector is three times a vector uh which is not in any of the options so option b is the only correct answer okay it is the only correct answer let's move on okay so the next question is something like this if p vector dot q vector is given to us as zero so what inference do you get from this uh, either the vector p is a null vector uh, or the q vector is a null vector or cos theta because p dot q is defined as magnitude of p magnitude of q into cos theta this is equal to zero zero okay now uh, unless specified uh, don't just assume key we are dealing with null vectors because 
it's not common to get null vectors, okay? So uh, the magnitude of P and Q are there. Anyway, in the next statement, it says find out P cross Q. If any of those uh, P vector and uh, Q vector are null vectors, then you cannot take a cross product like that, okay? So what essentially we have to come to a conclusion key cos theta must be zero then, okay? Cos theta must be zero. If cos theta is zero, then theta is what angle? Theta is 90 degree because cos 90 is zero, right? So that means this theta must be 90 degree. Okay, we inferred from that. Now they're asking what is the magnitude of P cross Q? We know the magnitude of P cross Q is magnitude of Q multiplied by magnitude of Q, okay? And sine of theta. But we already know the value of theta. Theta is 90 degree. So this is magnitude of P magnitude of Q sine of 90 degree and sine 90 is one. So the answer is magnitude of P, magnitude of Q. So option A is the correct answer in this, okay? Option A is the correct answer in this. Let's go. Okay, so let's do this question again. Like this is one of the other common question. They will ask you, what is the unit vector? And I already told you the unit, what is the unit vectors? formula so a vector is made up of magnitude as well as direction so if i divide the uh, vector by its own magnitude we get what the unit vector okay so we have what i cap plus j cap okay if i want to find out the magnitude of this thing the magnitude of this would be under root one square plus one square because if i write only i cap plus j cap that means there is one i cap and one j cap so this uh, you know the magnitude is root two Okay, so if I want to find out what is R cap, I simply divide I plus J divided by root 2. Okay, so what I get is 1 by root 2 I cap plus 1 by root 2 J cap. Okay, so that is how you do this kind of questions. Okay, let us do this question. So this is a little bit more applied um, compared to other questions. Uh, in this, the force is given to us, force is given as 10 I cap minus 3 J cap plus 6 K cap. And uh, it is said that this displaces from this point to this point. So the displacement vector is not given, but it is given that the point is going from what position to what position. So to find out what is the displacement, all you have to do is final position minus initial position. Okay, that is the uh, that is the formula for displacement. So whatever displacement R vector I'm representing by R vector is given by final position minus initial position. Final position is 10 I minus 2 J plus 7 K. And I have to subtract it from the initial position. So this is the initial position. This is the final position. So initial position is what? 6 I plus 5 J minus 3 K. Okay. So everything here is in meters. So if I subtract them, 10 minus 6 becomes 4 I cap minus two minus five becomes minus seven J cap and seven minus minus three is plus 10 K cap. So I got the displacement vector from these two. Now, if I if they are asking what is the work done? Okay, so I know the formula for work done is force dot displacement. So all I have to do is multiply these two vectors using a dot product. So 10 I minus three J plus six K, I have to dot this with four I minus seven J plus 10k okay so when i dot it i simply multiply the coefficient 10 fours are 40 minus 3 times minus 7 is plus 21 plus 6 times 10 is 60 so the answer would come out to be 121 joules okay so 121 joules b is the correct option here okay b is the correct option here let's move on to the last question okay so this is the question that we are going to do uh they're asking what is the angle between A vector and B vector when A and B vector are given. So remember, dot product is also useful, very useful in finding out the angle between two vectors. Because what I, why I'm saying that is because A dot B is simply magnitude of A, magnitude of B and cos of theta. This was a definition from here. Cos theta can, in most cases, cos theta can be found, uh, you know, uh, found out using by taking this into the denominator and making it like this okay so i took uh, i took the magnitude of a to the left hand side and magnitude of b to the left hand side from here i got the value of cos theta so i'm gonna do this and find out cos theta okay now a dot b is very very simple i i just multiply the coefficients here so two fours are eight plus three threes are nine plus 
4 to the 8. So all I did is I found out a dot b from this component form. So I multiplied 2 times 4, then I multiplied 3 times 3 and uh, this 4 times 2 I did. So this is the a dot b on the numerator. On the denominator, we want magnitude of a. Magnitude of a is just the square addition of all the squares of the components. So 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square. And then under root of 4 square plus 3 square plus 2 square. Okay. So when you do this, you are on the numerator, you get uh, 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay. And in the denominator, this first one would be uh, 2 square is 4. So 4 plus 9 plus 16. Okay. So 29. The first one is 29 under root 29. Again, because this is again 4 square, 3 square, 2 square. So if I add all of them together, uh, the simplified form would be 25 by 29. Okay, so cos theta comes out to be 25 by 29. So theta is what theta is cos inverse of 25 by 29. Okay, no need to find this. Okay, just write it like this cos inverse 25 by 29. I think it's one of the option. Yes, C is the correct option in this one. Okay, so with that, I'll end this video. Okay, so again, uh, because not a lot of questions were able to be done on class. So that is why I issued a uh, problem solving video. There are different problems from this also, but this should lay the foundation of, you know, uh, you being able to do other questions from vector. So um, we are, I'm going to attach uh, a bunch of assignments with this. So this should be used as a foundation. And then once you get the hang of it, do as many questions as you can do module, do assignments, and then you should be ready for scalars and vectors and do this for every chapter. Okay. So uh, I'm making this video for scalars and vectors. Probably it won't, it's not possible for me to make for other chapters also. Okay. But we'll see what we can do. I will attach other videos. Okay. And then we can work on it. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye till then.